Now, when you're evaluating grain-fed versus grass-fed beef, there's not a lot of information or credible studies out there that look at the differences between these two things, especially grass-fed, grass-finished to grain-finished beef. And so you'll have people that will tell you there's no difference. Um, they're both the same, so go ahead and get whatever's cheaper. But that advice is purely based on there's no studies that show the difference until now. There's a fascinating research project in place right now that is not 100% done, but there's definitely enough data to conclude that there's a major difference between these two sets of uh, variables. So that's what I wanna talk about today. This research project was coordinated and set up by a nonprofit organization called Bionutrient Institute, which I now became a member. And I'll put their information down below. It's a, it's a great uh, organization that is trying to figure out how do you define nutrient dense foods, okay? And not just plant-based vegetables, but also beef. So this is a territory that there's not a tremendous amount of information. In fact, if you just take any vegetable, like a tomato, and you look it up online, what are the nutritional facts, okay? It'll give you the calories, the total fat, the carbohydrates, uh, maybe some nutrients. But my question is, when was that data accumulated? What type of soils did they actually grow that tomato in? And um, was it organic? Was it conventional? There are so many variables. So the problem that this organization is trying to solve is to do the research and the homework necessary to get a wide variety of samples from many different farms. They have 250 different farms that are participating and they send in their samples. And then all this data is correlated with the soils that it's grown on and the type of vegetable they're using so that there's a really good transparency to look at the source of where this tomato comes from and the nutrients that are in it, not just vitamins and minerals, but phytonutrients as well. And one of the big projects they started last year was the beef project. And uh, there's some fascinating data. I talked with the scientists that's involved with that, and I learned some very interesting information I want to share with you today. But I do want to say um, they're working at a handheld, uh, affordable scanner that uses an ultraviolet light to pick up information from vegetables. And then eventually when the research is done, it can also be used on beef by scanning beef and it giving you feedback to evaluate all sorts of biomarkers to tell you what is good, bad, or okay. And the handheld scanner that they're using for vegetables right now, uh, just about done. I think everything's gonna be done at the end of the year. So it's a really exciting research project that aligns with what I'm into is promoting nutrient dense foods. But first you have to do the research to determine what nutrient density is. And then that takes a lot of time and money, but that gives you a little background of what this video is about. So today we're gonna to talk about the findings from the, this one study on beef, comparing grass-fed, grass-finished beef, okay? Versus grain-finished beef, okay? The difference between the two. Now, the only reason someone would grain-finish an animal is because of the cost. You make more money. It's going to be fattier. It's probably going to taste a little bit different and you can sell it for a larger profit. So when I talked to the scientists yesterday, something really jumped out. And I want to just talk about that first. When they evaluated this muscle from a grass finished cow, the muscle meat mimicked a healthy athlete compared with the grain finished muscle. It mimicked metabolic syndrome, okay? So the biomarkers with the grain finished beef um, had more inflammatory markers, higher uric acid levels, higher homocysteine levels, which in humans, that relates to cardiovascular problems. They had also higher um, advanced glycated end products, which are a negative biomarker that relates to proteins that have been connected and bound to sugars, which kind of clog up the system. And that can occur all over the body. And uh, you see this in diabetes, you see this in Alzheimer's, you see this in all chronic inflammatory conditions. And in the grass fed, grass finished beef, there is much higher omega-3 fatty acids. Okay. Those are the anti-inflammatory fats 
that help the cardiovascular system in the brain. There is a three times higher DHA and a 10 times higher EPA. Those are both omega-3 fatty acids. Also, there was uh, much higher phytonutrients. Okay, now you're saying phytonutrients in, in animal products? Yes, because grass-fed, grass-finished cows eat grass and grass has phytonutrients. So there were higher carotenoids like beta carotene in many others. There was much higher microbial diversity, which uh, gives you a whole different set of short chain fatty acids and secondary compounds that are beneficial to blood sugars and all sorts of things. Now, this next point I found very interesting. Um, there was higher amounts of niacinamide, which is a form of vitamin B3 in the grain finished beef compared to the grass fed. Now that's kind of weird because why would you have higher amounts of any vitamin in a grain finished beef? Well, these cattle are fed grains that are enriched with vitamins, especially B vitamins. And one of the vitamins that they enrich these grains with, which are the feed, which is niacinamide, because in the grass-fed, grass-finished uh, group, there was much higher niacin, which is a different form of B3. In the grass-fed, grass-finished group, there was higher vitamin C levels. There were higher vitamin E levels. There's three times as much vitamin E compared to the grain group. There were anti-tumor biomarkers that were much higher, like a five times higher than in the grain group. Another nutrient that was higher is called choline. And choline is very beneficial for making sure that your liver does not get fatty. And that's one thing I forgot to ask the scientists, was there any difference in liver fat, okay? Because when you fatten cattle that last one to three months of their life, uh, you're just fattening up not just the muscle, the liver is probably being fattened as well. There was higher carnosine, which is a compound that helps fat burning. So hands down, um, not only were there more nutrients in the grass-fed, grass-finished beef, but we have better metabolic biomarkers, which measures the overall health of that muscle. People think about muscle just as something that helps you move, but there's a huge metabolic factor in your muscles that helps you create energy, and evaluating the muscle tissue as far as the biochemistry and the pathways, you can tell a lot about the overall health of the animal. Now, after this study is done, obviously they need to do the next level study, which is to evaluate if you're consuming uh, a healthier animal product, um, does that make your body healthier? And that's the question I wanna ask you, and you can put this in the comments down below. Would it make a difference to your health if you consume sick animals with metabolic syndrome versus animals that were healthier, that had tissue of a healthy athlete. So tell me in the comments down below what you think. But I do know some people are going to say, well, I can't afford grass-fed, grass-finished beef. To answer that question, I'm just going to reply by telling you something is better than nothing. Uh, the most important thing is to keep your carbohydrates low. And when someone starts a ketogenic diet, I always tell them, do what you can. Don't worry about the quality at first. Just keep your carbohydrates low because the benefits of doing something that is low carb um, is very, very huge. But then the next phase you'd want to work up to is the increasing the quality of those foods that you eat until you get to the point where you're doing a healthy version of the ketogenic diet. Because right now, there are a lot of ketogenic foods out there that are carb friendly, but they're definitely not what I consider the healthy version of the ketogenic diet. Now on that note, I think it'd be appropriate for you to watch the next video on the healthiest foods that you can eat. I put that up right here. Check it out.